Mod Nation Racers. This was a PS3 exclusive kart racer that was made for Sony's amazing play, create, and share line of games, which included Little Big Planet and Little Big Planet spin off game called Little Big Planet Karting, which I'm pretty sure stems directly from this game. Mod Nation Racers even had a PSP port of this game, which functioned pretty much the same, obviously, with limited online capabilities. But I have never actually finished the main version of Mod Nation Racers. I finished the PSP version on a holiday to a caravan park which we won with a sofa uh, yeah we, we bought a sofa got a free holiday very cool but this is another one of those games that I never finished as a child and really did enjoy it especially all of the customization in this game is excellent and that's one thing I really do love about it and I thought I'd go back and try and 100% everything get all of the unlockables and whatnot and go through the racing experience and the career as a whole the main lore or like backstory to this game is that anyone can try out for this MRC event which is is like you know the the top of the top uh, go kart event I guess or this this karting universe it's like cars but if everyone just drove go karts we enter the pits and meet our crew chief and then it's off to the race. The first race that we do sort of serves as a tutorial level and I mean it kind of is because it just stops you halfway through the race and goes look here's how the tutorial works and then all it does is teach you the controls which is pretty standard for most kart racers. I mean pretty much everything copies the same way that Mario Kart works. It's just it sort of has different gimmicks and this one is that you're very creative and can make your own tracks, characters and cars. Every time you do a drift, draft or jump or even spin or even hitting people People. It builds up this little boost meter on the side which can be used as a boost obviously but it also can be used for a shield so any incoming attacks which you do get most of the time a warning for you'll be able to use it as a shield although it's very temperamental when it wants to work and getting the bearings for when you're actually going to be hit because the build up is so long before it even happens you usually hold it down early deplete all of it and then you get hit by the thing. After a rather uneventful race and coming first it turns out there's the extra challenges that get you more items in the game so you have to do specific tasks and get in first place to unlock all of these separate items I hadn't really got all of them so I went back and did it again and then just collected that last one because it was so simple that I could just do it quite easily after winning our race we get introduced to the mod spot which basically just functioned as like a hub world where you just meet other people and sort of everyone would just drive to the top of that like spinny podium thing and have a car meet. The race station is where you could go to start an online multiplayer race or you could do even a quick race against AI bots and then there was also split screen because that was huge back in the day when PS3 and Xbox 360 were about and then this is also where you can go to continue the career. There was top mods and top carts which I think either worked off of most downloaded or most liked mods and carts of the day and they would appear on these podiums for everyone to see and you could drive up to them and download them from the podiums if you like them as well and then they had the creation station which is where you literally make all of this stuff so anything all of the mods all of the carts all of it was done in here even the track editor is inside of here as well this next race had rather straightforward race objectives they were really easy 30,000 points is absolutely nothing because 90% of the time you will be drifting just because first of all it gets you more boost so anytime you need it you'll have it and most of the corners are short enough that you can just drift absolutely everything as long as you just transfer each time you can easily drift 90% of this track and even then you make it go so much quicker as well I don't know if you get like a speed boost for drifting or something but you go so quick at the end of it you have like a lap time that's absolutely nothing I got first place in this one but I had to redo it because I only got the drifting points one I didn't get the drafting one the drafting one was really straightforward it was kind of just be up people's ass and then you get the points that's kind of all that it was and then it was quite simple managed that rather easily and got all the items that i needed I was then taken into the creation station and was allowed to make my own character out of all of the stuff that I had unlocked already. I kind of wanted to do this a bit later so I could unlock a few more items so I had a bit more customizability because at the start it's rather bare bones there's not many to there's not there's just not that many good options and it kind of sucks but some of them are cool and some of them are kind of bad but most of the time it's just like there's stuff that you want to get on your cart it's just locked away. Finished stripping out my dude and then when I went to make the cart I just saw a body that had like Koenig's egg rear lights. So I was like, well, I'm going for that. And then that was the end of it.
This next race is also another tutorial level and basically this one just teaches you about another mechanic in the game which is called side swiping. So if you're right next to someone's cart and you flick right on the stick, you sort of just slam into them. It kind of disables them temporarily. If you have more boost it does more damage I think and it can destroy a cart. It, uh, it doesn't really happen, the AI doesn't do it to you but you can do it to them. It's super helpful when they're all clustered together, especially in the later races where you have to fight some of the, the boss characters I suppose you could say. Uh, it's so easy just to slam them as soon as you're next to them to make sure that they slow down and it gives you a nice little bit of time gain on them. I basically just had to slam three people and get all of that done and towards the end of this race I just started getting annihilated. It's part of the lore I guess. They say that you can't afford all of the repairs and whatnot but I was just getting bullied by the AI. At the end of it they were just slamming me left and right. Whilst we're being bullied I must tell you about this absolutely beautiful feature. I love this little detail that they look towards where the damage is coming from that they're going to get hit by. After finishing first and sideswiping absolutely everyone available, we got a ton more customizable unlocks. Got some bad news, Tag. That card is a tomb on wheels. What Chief meant to say is that we can't afford these constant repairs to your cart. She'll explode in a black mushroom cloud of annihilation. Again, not how I would put it, Chief. But with business at the shop so slow, we can only afford a few a more races and then we're out. And and it was fun while it lasted, right? Windshield. A fatal tangle of metal, fire, and destruction that's only gonna end in tears! Shortcuts are a vital part of Mod Nation races and what makes some of their tracks unique. You can also make these yourself when you use the track creator. You can make them by just originally drawing out the path and then afterwards you can just attach more track to your track to make shortcuts and faster routes and also just straight up alternative lines. Some of the lines are faster and some of them are slower and some are just downright tiny. They make small little changes like this one here where the ramp just straight up scammed me. Just was like, ah, you're coming around the corner. Nah, mate, not jumping over that. But they are what make the tracks unique and fun especially when you can master tracks and make your lap times absolutely minuscule which makes it a lot easier later against tougher opponents in the end game because as soon as you understand the track knowledge you'll be rapid around these tracks and will be losing to absolutely nobody once again i claimed first and also got all of my bonus objectives done next up the first race of the Mayhem Tour. New drivers will face the elite racers, the creme de la creme of the racing world, for the first time. That'll be a challenge. Like working with you, Gary. Back at you, Biff. How about I smack you in the face? Drillbit, Skidplate, and Wildcard are among the elites that contenders will race in this series. In other top news, Mother's Paint Shop has reopened as the first body shop for the general public in Mod Nation. Some are calling this the end of cream and pale blue carts. Some are calling this the end of cream and pale blue carts. Thanks. Gary. Into the Mayhem Tour we go and basically these kind of like boss or elite racers as they call them, they're, they're more of like a boss race character, you just sort of have to 1v1 them, they're the only kind of fast person on the track, they don't really uh, like batter you too much, there isn't too many, I mean the wild card one kind of just screwed me over quite a few times. But most of the time these lot are just really quick. That's the only difference with these ones and the other racers. But when you do beat them and you have to beat all of their challenges and then you have to go and beat them. Which can either put you in a one on one head to head race where there's no one about. Or there can be other bots that basically don't do anything apart from get in your way. And then there's also ones where like this drill bit guy you have to outscore him by doing the most amount of drift points around this one track. The other two racers skid plate. Slap down at the start line. That's completely inappropriate among professionals. Sure, Gary. And Santa Rita. And wild card. You didn't. Hey man, you play with fire. Being the other two elite racers in the Mayhem Tour, this being Skid Plate's map and this one, I got the first one done and I thought the hardest part about it was it was like really tense because I was coming up to the third lap and I was just like underneath it and I wasn't sure if I was even going to make the max speed points. I, I can't really tell that you're getting them until it tells you that you've sort of slowed down from max speed and then it adds points onto it, which is a bit odd so I don't really get where the detection is for that. But overall a really nice fast track that was just built 
built perfectly for this character. Wild Cards track was a bit of a problem for me because one of the tasks requires you to get airtime points and this map is really jump heavy. Like there's a lot of jumps around and you should be getting airtime points but I was just collecting zero. I'm not 100% sure if this is a common issue or this is just the emulator bugging out or I was just unlucky and I need to do the race again and then it might work but I was really odd that it didn't work and I'm just gonna restart my game and try it again at a different point to see if that was really the issue. On to the Mayhem Tour finale and we fight this final guy called Hale. Hale. Boy, he sure is proud of his cart. Look at how well he polishes it. Good thing you don't care that much about your car, Gary. What do you mean? There was a little incident when I... This was a really nice race with some fire hoop jumping action. The track drifts really well together and one of the tasks was to take Hale out in a specific point of the track, which is the stands, so everyone would see him get blown up. Okay, there he is. Blast this <laughs> That'll teach the poser. After finishing first and getting all of the bonus objectives, I went into a grudge match against Hale and this is how you unlock their sort of like clothing and their cart and whatnot. And these have different variants and this one was where you get put up against a load of bots and him. They don't really attack you, I, I, they didn't attack me but some of the other ones in the later levels started coming after me but these ones were kind of just there and you could just race against them and they were kind of quick. I guess that was their like sort of skill level of that bot or something. After coming in first and taking his gear, <laughs> that was the end of the Mayhem tour. I quickly took out Drill Bit, Skid Plate and Wild Card. <laughs> which fully completes the Mayhem Tour and takes us onto the next area. But before we do that, I want to take a look at this game's track creator, which literally adds infinite amount of game time to this game. You basically draw out the track by just driving where you want to drive. You can go up, down, round in circles, make bridges, make ditches, anything can be done with this. You literally just drive around in this big road laying cart and then you can auto complete straight to the finish. Auto populate which is like basically decorating the whole track which it does completely for you which adds in obstacles and weapons. Once completed it puts you in a camera mode with simulated racers driving around on your very own track which is really cool. There's so much more to this track creator than what I've shown. It's obviously really detailed. You can make shortcuts and whatnot but personally I didn't really delve into it just for the sake of this video because it's more to look at the whole game rather than just one part of it and you can even test drive your track and test race it which is really amazing i think that's a really nice detail so you can test it before you upload it online and have other people race your track and you can race it with your friends online the next tour started with an entry race well i guess you could call it that because this features absolutely zero elite racers although this track is rather generic it is still rather interesting it doesn't really have the theming that the elite racers tracks have where it sort of seems that it's fitted to their personality and suits that track and that character extremely well all of these tracks are super noteworthy and I do recommend you going out and playing this game yourself. The elite racers for this tour are Fade. Racer out there. In fact, half the time, no one even knows he's there. Well, that's something you can relate to, isn't it, Gary? Iceman. Good old-fashioned dance-off. What? Is this a music video or a kart race? You didn't enjoy the graceful skill of the worm, the mashed potato, and the running man? What skill? A few hundred volts and anybody can dance like that. I don't think that's quite accurate, Biff. Sure. Hold this microphone a second and I'll show you. Scout. These pros' life is just one long race. Well, in my opinion, it's a bit unsportsmanlike. Don't you agree? I'm sorry. After you said, in my opinion... And Jez. Let's go down to the track where... Hmm, Jez isn't the nicest driver, is she, Biff? Gary, as us beautiful people know, when you're gorgeous, you don't have to be nice. Or all that coordinated. Nothing really noteworthy happened inside of Fade's race. It was pretty easy, and I got it completed straight away, so it wasn't too much of a problem. Iceman's track is really, really nicely made, and I really like how it feels to drive around it. A really unique task with one of these was not to hit any of the walls whatsoever. I hit it on the first try by a complete mistake, just trying to figure out my bearings. And then after that, it was smooth sailing through that task. The track is completely different to anything you've played so far so most of it is mainly thin concrete sections with really tight winding corners that vary uphill and downhill. This is one of my favourite tracks that I've played so far just because of how different it is to all of the other ones and how much more technique it takes to get through it and once you really get the drifting down it is a real good time sliding through every corner. 
Scout Strike is a rather wide jungle map. They're all kind of the same, really. Like, anytime it's sort of a jungly theming, they sort of all feel rather similar. This one had a few jumps in it, but to me, it wasn't really a noteworthy track, and I could have easily just forgot that this was in the game. Jez's race has got to be one of the best experiences I've had so far in this game, and this track is really nicely made, and I really like how it looks, and this really unique wall ride sort of thing that's going on around here. It basically just adds, like, a half pipe to the outside of the track that you can drift all the way up and air into and do tricks as well you can do little 360s in this game so if you do air out of the ramp you can do a spin at the top and this is all where the weapons pods are but you don't really need them because you'll be sliding through this one and going really fast also this track and this race came with one of my favorite finishes that i've ever had in mod nation races it was the most tightest and closest tandem drift that went door to door just across the finish line i have no idea how i pulled this off but this has got to be the best moment Tomorrow's race proves to be a tough field of contenders, but Espresso has vowed to win the championship at any cost. The starting lineup consists of six different teams. Espresso can kiss my wrinkled... What the... Hmm. You know, I could sell the shop. Then we could probably afford to buy you a new boombox. I know it. If we play our cards right, and more importantly, you stay out of the way and leave the talking to me, we can get this kid bringing in the big bucks for CM. Who's looking for a dotted line? You are. I want to hear you say, show me the dotted line. I can see you know when to keep quiet. Good. The less you talk, the more you learn from me. Here's the deal. Under CM sponsorship, you get a new cart and a weapon system. Or you go home a loser and never race again. Want to be a loser or a racer? Chief, if you have an objection to him signing with CM, raise your hand. No. There's your answer, Slick. Sign it. You don't have to do this. I'll sell the shop. Or run to mommy. No offense. Well done, sir! You're fired. More enthusiasm, people! Onto the Grim Tour now, and we've been stripped of all our drip, and we're left with this bland CM Motors get up. Due to the previous cutscene where our cart exploded, we obviously lost that cart and the boombox inside of it, which is meant to be, you know, the expensive thing. It's like the weapon system in this game, and we didn't have the money for one, so we got to sign over to these lot and have this cart instead. <laughs> This race was pretty straightforward apart from the bonus tasks which was to activate three devastators without accidentally like slamming yourself in one but then also hit someone else with one within three laps and then come first on one of the smallest tracks I think this game has to offer. As you just saw there I activated three devastators and hit someone and then came second on the last corner. It's the only time I got overtaken. It was just on the last corner I'd get both of the objectives done and trying to hit the last devastator and then not hit myself in it because it kind of activate straight away and then they're also activating them behind you uh, a lot of the times this was just kind of frustrating because the track was just so tiny and there's so few devastators you can only get it in one spot we are then on to facing our elite races for this tour which is slick Ooh, I hope we didn't need that foot for the gas pedal <laughs> you said gas I'm not getting and shadow Ooh, shadows bringing some magic to the track today really can she make you disappear? I think she's a little too busy taunting Tag at the moment. Wow, that was a close call. No, really. Can she make you vanish? I pay. Shadow had another one of the notable tracks in this game where it just got super flowy, especially with the drift mechanic and her task that you have to do to 1v1 her was so perfectly done. Oh my god, it was amazing. You'd literally just have to slide around this whole course and you have to get as obviously as many drift points as possible. But it's made so well and flows so well together, especially in the later half, that it's just like so satisfying to pull off. Your dad always said you were born to race. I never understood until I saw you on the track. But Tag, I can tell you one thing. You weren't born to race for CM. It hurts me to see you like this. 
<sighs> Chief, you're all right. Of course I am. This ain't my first coma. What in tarnation's going on here? He's with CM now. No! Oh! He didn't want me to sell the shop. Twenty-five years ago, I wrecked and was too petrified to race again. I was as scared as a seventh grade boy at the school dance, but not you. You did everything you could to keep racing, and I respect that. You said you couldn't race. Your boombox was destroyed. I lied. I was a coward. I couldn't face the lousy snake who wrecked me. But I still got the box, and there's nobody who deserves it more than you. But you gotta promise to race the right way. Your way. After the small cutscene, we're given it back our customizable gear and customizable car, and then we're left to continue on with the Grim Tour. I mean, he's not budging a muscle. Wait for it. Wait for what? Aloha <laughs> means hello, goodbye, and booyah! Subtle bit. So Aloha and Nato are our final two opponents for the Grim Tour and I mean after getting our customization back after the little lore dump where you get given a really rubbish cart and you have to sign over your money away and whatnot just so you can keep racing I think it's like a nice little interesting story point and I think some people genuinely in the racing world probably do have to go through with something like that in order to keep them in the circle because obviously it's a very expensive motorsport just any motorsport whatsoever just costs a lot of money I'm pretty sure NATO's race was a pain in the ass to get done because of his side objectives it was to blow up these three boxes that were dotted around the place and they would cause you damage if you didn't use a weapon to take him out so I drove into all of them in the first lap and then made my way around the rest of the track it would usually put me in about 11th position so I'd have to go from last to first within two laps to try and make sure I could get the objective done at the same time the difficulty of the whole game is ramping up around this area you get given harder tasks to get more items and then you also just have harder opponents that now start sideswiping you and then also are a lot quicker this NATO guy was always at the head of the pack and quite a gap in between first and him especially when you tried to get all of the bonus objectives he would just disappear off into the future because he was so far away and trying to catch up at some points was almost impossible off to meet dino now and there is more people in this tour than i thought there's just a couple of more dudes and then you're into the pro scene where it's only the pro people and you don't have like a one-on-one -on -one with anyone until espresso at the end but you just get put against wildcard and all them lot and this is the first time where this game just added artificial difficulty it was just like it's not even like fair it's not i hate it when games it's no longer a skill issue it's just the game bullying you this stopped being a skill issue and started being yeah we're just gonna launch every attack at you every single second of the day and you just have to deal with it and still work this out you couldn't really do much about it because you'd use your shield on one thing and then instantly get blasted by another and stuff like that was really winding me up and this is the first time i got angry at this game because of the fact that it stopped being a skill issue and started being a game issue Wrapping up this tour with Dollar. In for an interview with Dollar, but he seems a little busy at the moment. Look at Dollar dish out the hurt with elbow dressing thrown in for extra flavor. Hungry Gary? No, <laughs> no, not at all, Biff. And Diablo. We're almost ready here, folks, and today's race is really going to be. Whoa! What an entrance! Say Buenos Dias to Diablo. Dear me, I think he forgot his parachute. Real base jumpers don't need a parachute. Where in Dollar's race, I abused the shortcut so much that you can hear them shoot a lightning bolt. I fall three corners behind me and you can still hear it chase me all the way up to the finish line. That is how focused they are on making sure that you do not win. That they will shoot it a full three corners behind you and it will follow you all the way to the finish line to hit you. And when that didn't work, they sent me another one right after I had depleted all my shield just before the finish line and then another sonic wave just spawned in out of nowhere. They are this hard focused at making sure that you do not get this far ahead. And then Diablo's race was pretty straightforward. Yeah, it's got cool jumps, it's a cool track, it's got cool fire hoops, it's got cool little shortcuts, it's got unique ones when you got to shoot with a target to make a separate little jump. Yeah, it's a nice track, I can't lie to you, it's pretty cool. Race fans, are you ever in for a treat? 
It's the start of the Grand Tour Series, the winner of which will be crowned the new world champion. We're at the jaw-dropping heights of Dire Cliffs to start it off. That's right. This is the whole enchilada with a side of beans and those hot pepper thingies that make Gary scream like a little third grade schoolgirl. Just like the other day when he succumbed to my atomic wedgie. Remember that, Gary? Yes, I remember. <laughs> yeah, well, it feels like it was just yesterday. It was just yesterday. Booyah! This track was alright. I didn't really like it too much. It's okay. It's very tight and very twisty. It's one you kind of have to get used to. I feel like doing the tasks on this would be kind of annoying. Just because you can fall off so often. And some of the times, the corners are so sharp, you drift and you just end up off the edge you just do a drift and you're just gone but i was so close to losing here because drill bit was miles away until i did this little uh, bump off the wall and hold down the boost meter in panic and make it across the finish line first he was like two centimeters away from me the next track was also shortcut heavy so i could just abuse a certain line and absolutely disappear once again i was on the third lap and absolutely no one is around me and i was just being hailed with rounds and rounds of missiles and lightning bolts and stuff like that just because i was so far ahead i could hear them launch it before it even was anywhere close to me rumble jungle is one of the nicest made tracks ever it is so driftable and you can just disappear because if you're good at drifting you will fly you will go so quick through this track just because all of the corners link together you can just zoom off into the distance easily just so easily just because of how well this map is made it feels so good to drive it feels so good to race on and you can just disappear if you're amazing at drifting the track in between this one and fracture oh it is just forgettable it is so forgettable it's just one of those tracks where it's like super tight turns it's pretty easy i only got caught on the barriers every now and again they seem to have a slight janky hitbox you know where if you just you would just bounce off of a barrier normally this one you would just clip onto it and it would stop you dead still that's the only kind of annoying thing but overall super simple track Right, Fracture. Let me talk about Fracture. One of the rare races where I started weirdly at the front. I don't know why. Only this race and uh, one of the other ones did this. But this track is not made for this camera angle. That's literally the only real problem that is with this, is the way that it's designed does not work with the camera angle. You can barely see what's ahead of you and it's just kind of confusing on where to go. It's not super obvious, I know there's big signs everywhere, but when it's so fast paced, because this is a really fast paced karting game, you just kind of get lost and it's not so obvious where you have to go if i could see more of the track in front of me and like what's coming up it wouldn't be too bad but a lot of this is just like weird track design especially for this camera i think that's actually the only issue is the camera for this race other than that i think it's completely fine here after looking at the orange things it's just more of like ah oh, i can't see where the road is gonna be so that's my go-to in my mind when i'm going really fast is where's the road i need to go there and when it starts hiding it from you it does lead to kind of a frustrating race especially when you just start falling off of stuff and you have to get put all the way to the back and that's even more frustrating mount pain and the only pain here is the ai and the game being unfair every now and again i just got obliterated left right and center for what was seemingly no reason at one point someone put their shield on and i just exploded i don't think that's a feature i just randomly got deleted because somebody turned their shield on i get sniped by a barrel i get sniped by a bloody pole coming out the floor oh yeah the pole's not there and the effect goes off and instantly stops me right in my path like what am i meant to do about that uh, yeah some of it skill issue but some of it oh my god is the ai just making up new rules i've never seen any time in my entire life this happen but here how am i meant to defend myself i'm in the air and I die. What am I meant to do there? It, you can't put a shield up whilst you're in the air, by the way, that just doesn't work. And most of the time, you would never get attacked in the air. And this time, it randomly decided to delete me. And here we are, the final race of the game, finally against Espresso. For an exclusive interview with Tag. And there's Espresso sizing up the challenger. What's he got up his sleeve? Ouch! More like what's he got upside Tag's head. Espresso wants the attention, all right. And the title. And my god, was this race easy? What? This guy sucks. This guy's actually bad. How are you the professional in this industry? I gapped you. You, you were sent to Gapsville. No way in hell were you ever catching me. You are bad. You are so bad. Literally the easiest race of my entire life. 
plus this track is super fun to drift this is, you can just like bang 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 slide through this section it's so good this guy sucks actually the worst racer in existence you, you, no wonder you lost your job mate you are actually awful but overall, this is a great game. This is a great race, and this is an excellent game. Uh, even out of all of the kart races, this is definitely the best one. I don't know any kart creator which gives you all of the tools to make your own track for the rest of your life. Uh, the ability to make your own carts and your own guys. I know it's not like our bits of carts do better like in the new Mario Kart. And what Mario Kart has a story mode. This has a story mode which is genuinely interesting and really fun to do. The cutscenes are excellent and the way that it's all put together, the story and everything, it's just so good. This is definitely a game worth playing and if you haven't, really do check it out because I think it's one of those games that was just like a hidden gem. I don't know, maybe everyone played this and I thought it was just me that played it you know it was kind of like little big planet for me i thought i was the only dude out there playing this uh, especially around my area where i lived but uh no maybe everyone has played this and i just want to tell more people about it this was the first game i ever purchased on the playstation store and this was back when you know ps3 era so downloading games online wasn't very good or very fast it took me three days to download it actually i think it actually took a week because it took three days in total for the download to complete but a week because each time someone tried downloading something else in the house, it would corrupt this download and it would make me start it again. So we had to leave the PS3 on over like days and have it download at like one megabyte a second. This was back when the internet was bad, okay? So give my internet a break, it was just when the internet was bad. But well worth it and I definitely think everyone should check this game out, especially if you're just looking for something new to play. RPC S3 is out and the emulator runs it really well. It crashed one or two times, which was actually mainly on the loading screen. I think it was because I've got a dodgy cable in my controller and I think it was just overloading RPC S3 of me plugging it in and out, so it just crashed the game. But overall, excellent game. It runs really well. There's slight visual bugs in the side of the cutscenes. You can see sometimes the side of my car is white and then when I'm driving it's not. And that's just like a random thing but please do play this it's excellent looks like i'll be chiefing for another few years oh come here no this one's all you what no way you made it out of turn three without me And you can watch the rest of that cutscene when you finish the game yourself because you definitely should play this. It's very, very good. Way better than any Mario Kart that's out there. I know Mario Kart's got nostalgia around it, but this game has it for me. And this game is just better, man. This game is just so much better. But thank you all very much for watching and sticking around to the end of this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. I really love making this and I really like making these type of videos. So I hope I can do this from now on because this is my favorite thing to do. Um, please do like the video. Do you know, show your support. I really do appreciate it. Subscribe for more of this stuff because i will be making more videos on more games like this i don't know what it will be next i'll find something on rpcs3 or i'll find something on the ds or i'll find any game that i played throughout my childhood and try and put it all together in a video for you but yeah subscribe for more of this stuff and thank you very much to my money havers andrew grim luna francis leo and possibly anthony thank you all very much for supporting the channel and allowing to make whatever video i like because that is really important to me so thank you very much subscribe for more of this stuff and i'll see you a lot later. Goodbye.